With the analyzing rod placed in the surveyor, the hinge is loosened to allow for free movement of the table. The cast is now angled to allow the analyzing rod to fit against the side of the tooth as close as possible. Once an acceptable angle is reached, the hinge is tightened to allow for the table to be stabilized in position. The proposed angle is now checked against the other areas where a guide plane might be made. The goal is to achieve an angle where minor modifications are needed in each abutment tooth requiring a guide plane. To mark the survey line, the carbon marker and a metal shield are placed within the mandrel. With the carbon marker in place, the top hinge is loosened to allow the mandrel to move up and down freely along the height of contour of the teeth. Care must be taken to ensure that the table is flat against the platform. You must also ensure that only the side of the carbon marker touches the height of contour of the teeth. Both hands are used during this. One hand controls the mandrel's movement, the other controls the table's movement. The mandrel can also be rotated to ensure that the carbon marker and not the metal shield touches the teeth. After all necessary survey lines have been marked, it's time to measure the depth of the undercuts. Measuring the depth of the undercuts is done using undercut gauges. This here is a 0.01 inch gauge. It is placed within the mandrel. The undercut gauge is then positioned so that both the shank and the disc touch the teeth. The shank will inevitably touch the height of contour. Wherever the disc touches is the indicated undercut. Those undercuts can then be marked with a lead marker to indicate the position of the undercut. 